Hey everybody and welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily for Monday. Let's get a good clap uh, to memorialize. It's no secret that a lot of things are closed down during this pandemic. You may have noticed. Offices, bars, restaurants, oh, and repair centers for consoles. Where the f*** am I supposed to get my VCR repaired right now? I have a guy. He looks like me and he wears a tank top at all times. Yes, yeah, and it's it's <laughs> confounding how he's still in business and owns property in Los Angeles for a VHS retail. Yeah, Nintendo announced last month that its repair centers would be closed because of COVID-19 concerns. They're gradually starting to reopen now, but it's still been a big problem for people with busted switches. Busted switches? No, they're so well made. This I, yeah, I know. No, right? They're like yeah. the Maytag repairman over there. Right. Well, yeah. Surely those business. Switch owners are liars. Ha, we're kidding, obviously. That was all very hilarious because the Switch <laughs> has had more than its share of issues. Most famously, it's drifting left Joy-Con, which has been an issue literally since the console launched in 2017. Nintendo is even facing a big lawsuit over the issue. So with all the authorized repair shops closed, people are resorting to trying to fix their own switches. The online publication One Zero interviewed a number of people who have had issues with Joy-Con drift and are resorting to DIY measures. I tried to get some of mine fixed once and Nintendo refused because it wasn't a registered console with them because I bought it in a parking lot. There's even a step-by-step -step repair guide on the site iFixit that walks you through fixing your Joy-Cons. The site told One Zero that demand for replacement switch parts has tripled since lockdowns began and traffic to its switch repair guides is up significantly. That guide is actually pretty good. It like walks you through, but I'm too chicken. Once it comes to like pulling the battery out and messing with the oh, yeah. connectors and stuff, I, I'm, I pieced out. Meanwhile, according to Google Trends, more people searched how to fix Joy-Con during the week of April 12th than any other time since the Switch's release. So yeah, they're like, Google, how do I fix my Joy-Cons and rebuild my shattered trust in Nintendo and uh, maybe make something other than pasta for my kids because they hate it. <laughs> and Google's like, here's an ad for Walmart, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> what did you want? So yeah, a lot of, there are a lot of people with this problem and they're turning to the internet for help. Switch owners on Twitter have shared their own repair stories. Luckily, most of them seem to be good, so. yeah. One Switch owner, Matt Clausen, Matt, I can fix anything Clausen, wrote, he has repaired two of my four Joy-Cons for sticky R button. He said the tolerances are so small that any debris can cause them to jam up and not operate smoothly. Luckily, he said it was a simple fix. A little bit of a humble brag on Matt's part there. Yeah, but very cool that the console designed to be taken anywhere cannot have the smallest grain of sand inside of it. <laughs> right. Or it will power down and explode. Right. Podcast producer Anthony Nielsen was planning to repair his two tweeting, just waiting for the last part to come in to do an overhaul myself. New sticks, latches, and cooling fan. Like hell, I'm going to leave my Animal Crossing island abandoned for weeks. And Twitter user Velcro Poodle wrote, I've never done any electronics repair in my life, but I bought a replacement Joy-Con stick and did the switcheroo myself. It was a last result after everything I'd tried failed. It was oddly empowering. So Velcro Poodle learned a little bit about themselves through this experience. There is something yeah. very cool about putting together any electronics thing. Even if like you didn't really have to do anything that technical, it's like, it still feels like I'm the smartest guy in the world. Until something goes wrong and you're like, I'm stupid. That's the most important thing about myself. And I forgot that. Of course, Nintendo has had issues for years when it comes to Joy-Con drift, both with the original Switch and the Switch Lite, which isn't, doesn't even really have Joy-Cons. Well, it has those joysticks though. They're the right, same, right. you just can't yeah. remove it. So it's a million times worse if they start to drift. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, a class action suit was filed last July and almost immediately after that lawsuit happened, Nintendo magically started giving free repairs on drifting controllers. What a weird coincidence. Gamesindustry.biz reported that a judge in March denied Nintendo's move to dismiss the big lawsuit. They did send the case to an arbitrator, so mm. we'll see. That might be a move for Nintendo just to kind of wiggle out of it a little bit. This isn't just a Nintendo issue though. Other consoles have had their issues in the past. Most infamously, there was the red ring of death that was the scourge of Xbox 360 owners. According to a Game Informer survey back in 2009, the red ring of death affected more than half of all 360s. It yeah. ended up costing Microsoft over a billion dollars to Oof. make right. I think we should talk about that more. <laughs>
Should we do that in every story? When the PS3 had its own issue known as the yellow light of death, but that failure rate was much, much lower. That same Game Informer survey revealed only about a 10% failure rate among the PS3s. Not great, but it wasn't as bad as the red ring of death either. Oh, you know when some engineer discovered that after they'd all gone out the door that they were like, there's one person in the room had to be like, maybe it'll be fine. It might fix itself. And while defective Joy-Cons don't cause the Switch to fail, they can still be expensive to replace. Aren't Joy-Cons like 80 bucks or something? Yeah. More and expensive than like Xbox or PS4 controllers. Yeah. And if, you're talking about, and if you're talking about Switch Lite, it's not like you can pop off the old Joy-Cons and put in new ones. You'd have to send in the entire console to Nintendo. Oh, but you can't right now because Nintendo's repair centers are closed. Well, also, maybe you're not strong enough to pop them off the Switch Lite. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of repairs, this brings up another issue, the right to repair your own console. That's something that the game industry has fought long and hard against, which is super lame. But do you know what's not super lame? ExpressVPN, oh, oh. that old chestnut. This episode of Inside Gaming Daily is brought to you by ExpressVPN. So we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. So now that many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. So this whole week, I've been using ExpressVPN to binge Doctor Who on UK Netflix. It's so simple to do. I just fire up the ExpressVPN app, change my location to the UK, refresh Netflix, and that's it. So ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries, so just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. If you like anime, you can use it to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service, so Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, whatever, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is it is ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD no problem. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on a personal device or on the big screen, wherever you are. If you visit our special link right now at expressvpn.com slash inside gaming, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash inside gaming. Thank you, ExpressVPN. So back to the right to repair your own console. Uh, console makers have been giant about this. They've actively fought against legislation in a number of states that would make it easier for gamers to fix their own machines or send them to an independent repair shop. But from console makers' point of view, fixing your own console is just too darn complicated and potentially dangerous. They say it can make hacking easier. But from the perspective of some gamers and third-party repair shops, it's just a question of simple fairness. Remind me which amendment to the Constitution is the right to repair your own console. I think it's the second. second. That's what all those rallies are about. A few years ago, some states in the U.S. were considering legislation that would require console manufacturers to sell replacement parts and tools to independent companies and consumers at the same price they're sold to authorized centers. The legislation would also have required console makers to make diagnostic manuals public, as well as software tools to fix consoles. These are known as right to repair bills, and we saw them proposed in New York, Minnesota, Wyoming, Tennessee, Kansas, Massachusetts, Illinois, Nebraska. But needless to say, the game industry did not like this one bit. Uh, the Entertainment Software Association, which represents game manufacturers and does a great job doxing journalists that attend its conferences, they wrote one bill sponsor in Nebraska and said it would threaten consumer safety and security and that it mandates the disclosure of protected proprietary information. So yeah, they, uh, again, they argue that it's unsafe, it would cause cybersecurity problems and stealing of their beloved IP. Thousands of Americas could get zapped a little bit on their fingies. The ESA's letter to a Nebraska state senator states that smartphones, computers, servers, and other devices are constantly at risk from hackers, and any weakening of those standards, such as sharing sensitive diagnostic tools, will increase risk to consumers. But lawmakers say that those <laughs> restrictions create an unfair repair monopoly. The New York Right to Repair Bill states that these limited authorized channels result in inflated, high repair prices and high overturn of electronic items. Another concern is the large amount of electronic waste created by the inability to affordably repair broken electronics. Obviously, it's a huge problem during this pandemic when they close down their own repair shops. You're just stuck. You're stuck with a broken console and Nintendo's like, eh, sucks to be you. We got nothing for you. Yeah, so until Nintendo reopens or just stops being dicks about letting people fix their console, Switch owners are basically stuck going it alone. Yeah, it honestly really sucks and is really anti-consumer of Nintendo and all the other big console makers who 
demand you can't fix your own things, but then don't really provide comprehensive tools to get them fixed. Yep. Yep. That sucks. It's, cool. it's not even like you could just. Day. It's not even key, like you could just be like, oh, I guess I'll just buy another one, which I wouldn't because I don't have that kind of money just lying around. But you, they're sold out. <laughs> now you got to go through some shady dude on Craigslist who's like, yeah, I can fix that. But there is a silver lining to all of this. With all of us locked down, lots of people are doing a lot of gaming. It's nice to spend the end of the world doing what we love, and a lot of other people are doing it too. And might I also add before we get into it, hey, happy 420. Just... <laughs> 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 None of us really love